so yeah, I'm just thinking we would go over, you know, minutes, public comment, share any learnings that we've had, check-ins, um, and then report backs from other, from city committees, um, and just getting an update about what's next there, and then spending the rest of our time really focused on um, the creative discourse survey results and city council presentation on the 21st. Um, and, up, and send the uh, updated draft there, um, if I can share my screen there as well. And then um, any other business, so including, you know, any fundraising or recruitment. Um, I also just put in, so I was like, I feel like we should just touch base on the follow-up in the ch committee chair meeting that we had over a month ago now, um, just to make sure to see if there's any other like next steps that we should do there um, and then make our plans for our next meeting. How does that all sound to folks? Okay. And Michael, are you good taking notes again? Yes. Thank you. Although let's maybe, uh, let's, let's hold that. Let's do, just do a round of, yeah. Check-ins, learnings that you're doing, anything along those lines, anything you want to share? I'm pulling this up so I can like actively say the right thing, but I'm taking some trainings to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns Ooh. on uh, um, sort of an equity work and it's about implementation and like which it's past like it's sort of talking about to uh, public administrators what what is the point of planning and then once you've done any sort of planning or information gathering how do you implement that what are the next steps there so um, that's been really helpful uh, I'll, if I find the name of the group who's running it, I will send that into the chat. Um, they, it sounds a lot like GARE, uh, which I think some of y'all are familiar with, but um, it's not who's running it. So it's a group called Real. And so I'll put a um, link in the chat to that group. But they're doing uh, a class on organizing and operationalizing racial equity in government. So it's exciting. It's been really nice. Thanks, Cameron. I'm trying to think, I feel like we just talked. Yeah, Jeremy. Um, good morning. I'm good. Uh, it's definitely summer and feels like I'm doing a lot with kid things and renewed visitations from people from afar. Um, so it's definitely like a different pace than <laughs> pandemic time, which is good, but also hard to get used to. Um, doing more in-person stuff at work which is energizing, um, particularly the workshop kind of things that I do. Um, but yeah, I haven't, haven't done too much learning. <laughs> I'm actually not learning. I'm trying not to learn. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, okay. definitely in kind of summer state. So yeah, trying to swim and bike as much as possible and then take care of the other things I have to take care of. the link, Cameron. Um, I think I've I, I'm, as I said, I'm doing well, going high, camping, same thing, just seeing all the people that I haven't seen in 16 months, you know, just cramming it all in. Um, and I, um, you know, I'll still all outside and still camping, which is lovely. Um, and I, um, we've been working our way through Tema Okun's um, like principles of white supremacy culture um, at, on staff. And I, you know, I think, I, I, I've probably shared it before because it's just like such a useful 
resource, but we've just been going, you know, really deeply intentionally through it as a staff and, you know, recognizing like all the different moving pieces for that. And so, yeah, I'll share that in the chat um, as well. Oh, I'm curious, Sheena, um, cause I'm familiar with that work and have explored it with others. I'm, I'm curious how your staff is responding to it. Is it like, oh yeah, that makes sense or somewhere in between or, you know, I'm curious. Yeah, we're doing more like personal reflection on tensions that we're hold, you know, feeling and holding in it. And then, you know, organizationally, how are we doing things? You know, so we have a meeting today where we're talking about urgency and like mm -hmm. urgency around, like it's really important to get stuff done <laughs> and to like be moving forward on priorities. And where is like, where are we like, um, you know, maybe leaning too far into like a false sense of urgency and um, can we back off? Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I would just share like I've encountered some some white folks responding to that work as being like, well, I like to do a good job. I like to make sure my work is of high quality. Does that mean I'm not a white supremacist? So I found folks have been, it's hard to untangle like the systemic kind of ingrained cultural stuff from the like, that's just who I am as a person. Um, so I, that was really interesting for me to observe in some larger groups where I've seen that work um, explored, so. Yeah. I've seen that too in, in work and, and especially I think it happens when people have been entrenched in a place for a really long time, which I think we've just sort of generation, generationally seen, it's just people holding on to jobs for a really long period of time once you're in a job for that long you personalize that job like you are the job mm -hmm. and so the job is you and so it's really hard to separate what the job function entails and like talking about how it fits into like a larger system versus you like mm -hmm. about you because you are that role right i you know i think we as the city face that challenge as well yeah so thanks for bringing that up interesting Michael, Carolyn, Pellen. So yeah, to say. Uh, Good morning. Yeah, I <laughs> attended uh, lots of conferences uh, last week. And one of them was like um, the organization called Conference Board. And they were talking about this racial justice, social justice, and how to build it in uh, private companies, like private sector. And it was very funny because at the end, people are talking, oh, it is related to budget, right? If you have enough money, then you can be more inclusive organization. You can create policies, blah, blah, blah. And now um, Cameron said about the like public offices. So I just, you know, curious, is it the same for it? Because I don't believe it. But at the same time, I understand the rationale. But is it really related to money to be more inclusive and uh, like uh, creating like racial justice and social justice? I don't know. It seems a little bit kind of avoiding for me to make change. <laughs> there should be a something. Maybe in the future, we can come up like ideas. Do this. You don't need any money or you know anything to be like uh, racially just or something there should be something right we can do uh, without having lots of budget or like enormous money in our pocket to be recognize other people and be socially you know inclusive I don't know yeah so I just want to ask Cameron, was it same in your uh, meetings or anything came up like that? Or people like, no, we can't do it. We don't need any specific budget or something. Our good intention right. will be enough. Well, you know, I, I, I hate for good intentions to get in the way of like actual progress too. So, um, you know, I think, I think we're lucky because creative discourse has been helping and we're paying for that, right? I think that's the biggest rub for a lot of folks is they feel like 
I don't know how to lead us through this issue and I don't know what to do. So I need money to hire someone to tell me what to do, right? But there's so much, um, you know, most of the things that we've seen coming out of this recommendation from creative discourse doesn't really cost that much, right? A lot of things are very easy. Um, the last organization I worked in, one of the first things they did was take names and schools, the school names off of resumes as they sent them out, you know, to really get rid of any sort of bias there. Um, I, that doesn't cost anything. Um, time, I mean, I guess if that's an argument, but I think there's so many little things like low hanging fruit that could immediately be done based on tons of best practice research, right? You don't need to pay someone to tell you what to do. You do need a champion though, you know? I think that's also an issue where a lot of people don't wanna step up and be like the organizational champion. And I think that's hard because it takes a lot of like time and time is money. But I, I you know, that hasn't come up really in our conversations because we recognize, but we're lucky because we have creative discourse helping us. But I think we've recognized a lot of those things don't need need uh, a lot of capital to get started at least i hope that i hope that was what you're looking for i need to hear something yeah we can do this <laughs> yeah <laughs> allocating so much money or saying that oh yeah we need to money and at the end everything's kind of depends on money i mean sometimes it is really kind of bothering me right <laughs> okay the solution if we have money we will do it uh, sometimes mm. it is not the reality yeah as you said there are things we can just do it easily yeah sorry Well, we can, oh, go ahead, Carolyn, say on you. This is a little, little bit off topic, but cheap and indicative. I worked for an organization that had maybe uh, 50 people. And there was discussion briefly about changing the sign on the men's room door to something like gender neutral. No way. <laughs> <laughs> what difference it made? I don't know, because the men's bathroom and the women's bathroom looked exactly the same. <laughs> and they were single stall, you know, you just go in. But it was amazing that something that simple, it was just a flat out, no, we can't do that. And But it does go to, to just taking the name off a resume or anything else, that the people are just trenched in their own history. Yeah, I learned another thing. I think it is pretty good. They say people are not afraid of change. They are afraid of losing the things they already have. And they say, if you kind of explain them and convince them they are not losing anything, but they are gaining, you know, uh, new things, then there won't be any fear of change. So I have never thought like that. Maybe that, that's the way to do things, right? Just explain people, you will not lose anything. Change is not bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will be good for you too, you know? Something like that will be helpful for all of us, I think. Thanks. Should we review the meeting minutes as our next step? Um, Thank you so much, Cameron. So even though minutes are, I feel like so regimented, it's so interesting to see if Michael's different that as they're different from Cameron. So um, that was fun. And they were the June oh. 23rd. Yes. Does everyone have them or? Could you send them, uh, post them again? Uh, I didn't didn't see them. 
statement. Yeah, on, I will link them. Hold on just a second. Perfect. Thank you. I can't vote anyway because I wasn't there. So, but uh, you can technically. No, no. I got them Roberts rules as yeah. most memorized as humanly possible. I think. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It takes a second. minutes. Well, that's a hell of a link. <laughs> Is that the link to the minutes? Oh. Yes. That's what <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Yikes. So messy. <laughs> okay. Minutes. I make a motion that we approve the minutes. Helen, do you want a second? Yeah, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. Good job. Got our minutes. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay. And then report back from city committees. So I think the big thing here is that, you know, as as was in the minutes, is that um the creative discourse pre presented to the police review committee um, last week, and we'll be presenting to the you know city council on July 21st, um, and the police review committee will be presenting their recommendations in like September. Right? Did I get that right, Cameron? This was Actually, very confusing so, to me yesterday. Yeah, so. I know. So we. <laughs> So we talked for, I swear to you, 10 minutes about scheduling after you got them off the meeting. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the creative discourses um, world. So they will be presenting y'all's findings um, August 18th um, at, the, at the regular city council meeting. And then, yes, the police review committee will be in September, August, September. Yeah. So not July 21st, because right. half of them couldn't make it. Right. So. Thank you. Um, but yeah, any, um, so thank you, Cameron. Any, yeah, any updates about, from the police review committee? I will just say I applied for the public bathroom committee. Um, I know they're, being, they're going to review those applications later this month. And so um, I was feeling very excited about that and did apply. Didn't know if anyone else did. Um, yeah. Um, I can give you some information about what's going on with the police review. We are um, starting, we're deep now deep into the making the recommendations. I think there are eight, eight, eight or so that have already been presented and acted upon either passed or rejected or withdrawn or one way or the other. Um, there are some more that are anticipated uh, all of the reports on, I think all the reports on the current situation of, sort of what Alyssa calls the state of the state, uh, which means current practices, really. Uh, those are all drafted, I believe. And uh, let's see. Um, that's about, that's about it. The, 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 rec the recommendations part is the is the, the part that's important right now. And I can go, run down the list if you're interested, but um, yeah, you sure. will. Um, yeah. Uh, hold on, let me go on. And I'll call this this document up and um, and then and then you can, I'll, I can talk you through it. Or you can come back to me if you want to. Oh. 
Well, I was then going to move us to the creative discourse survey results and city council presentation. Well, okay. And I can... So I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll just give you a few of the ones that I can remember. Um, Sorry, Michael. Uh, yeah. We did one on uh, there's a recommendation to adopt um, uh, body worn cameras that uh, that was passed. There was an, uh, a recommendation to um, concerning the, the militarization and uh, Montpelier Police Department's involvement, non-involvement in the purchase of uh, military grade weapons and what's going to happen go forward, going forward. Uh, there, was, there was one on recruitment. Um, there's several, there's some on recruitment, raising the age, minimum wage, minimum age and requirements now are age 18 and completion of high school or GED. Um, we, we voted to uh, make the minimum age 21 um, with uh, some post-secondary education and, and some demonstrated commitment to community service as uh, preliminary requirements. Uh, there was um, one on, um, um, uh, what is it called, situation-based learning in, in the training uh, to move towards to, to situation-based rather than just uh, stand-up lecture. Uh, also broadening the curriculum for, uh, for, for the training. Uh, there was one on uh, uh, training for crowd control, uh, which is not currently being done by the Montpelier Police Department. Uh, it seems to be the natural thing for a state capital. Um, there was one on there's one that's just coming up on um, training for dealing with young adults, uh, pre-adolescent and adolescent behavior so that police um, have a, a better idea of the kind of the psychological, socio sociological context in which teenagers uh, operate. Uh, there was, there's one, I'm working off the top of my head. We, there was one to, uh, there was a proposal to, um, reconsider tasers that was rejected and or, or actually just tabled and just withdrawn. Um, there was one about what's the, what's the other ones? Um, oh, there's still one that we haven't yet we're finished uh, um, voting on about uh, decriminalizing uh, sex workers. And um, think, let me think. Uh, I think that covers it. I have the feeling I'm leaving something out that's crucial, but I can't remember what it is. Anyway, we're making progress on these. Work. That's so exciting. Um, so the process is that there'll be a draft thing that will go to the public or back to these stakeholders. Like, yeah. should we as CJAC review the draft too, or do you think more as like individuals can review, well, the, I, review I, the draft? I, I, I think it's probably a good idea, and uh, I'll pr pass that along to to uh, uh, Alyssa. Um, and there isn't a like a, t a date for the circulation of the well, draft. Is that correct? We I don't know what the date is now. Uh, okay. From what Alyssa said, I think it's supposed to be like the week of the fifteenth of August. Okay. It's like, that's their goal. But I think timelines are kind of shifting with the work that's happening. Does that sound right, Michael? Yeah. Well, I missed the last meeting, I think. Oh, okay. I can't remember. Um, but I don't know. So I don't know what the what the, the timeline is. I feel like, yeah, well, the police review committee has been around for a lot less time than CJAC, and I feel like has come up with a lot more <laughs> recommendations. It's done a lot. So few, congratulations real they did have like a very set thing yeah. kick in the pants to do right and a timeline which y'all did not have so <laughs> and a lot of work so i just want to keep hyping this group up because y'all have done a lot thanks I cameron no, that's great. <laughs> coming to council too you know y'all are doing all right great any other questions on police review or go ahead Sorry. Okay, I have one uh, one question. Um, the the uh, the recommendation on on sex workers, um, and we'll vote on it this this at this meeting, which is later today. But the way I as I've been reading it, um, it's really asking the city council 
to do more than it's talking about police because what the, the, the one part that really does address police is to deprioritize um, enforcement of whatever um, laws there are on, on the books uh, for sex workers. But mostly it's asking the city council to uh, legalize sex work and to be, you know, to go to the legislature and stuff like that. So I'm wondering if you think that this is something that should come to CJAC since it's really not, it, it's turning out not, as I read it anyway, and I may be overruled by the vote, um, as I read it, it's really not so much a police issue because the police already are, are, have deep, deep prioritized um, dealing with sex workers. Um, but does this committee want to take that on as something to you know, examine and then make a recommendation to the city council? Because if that is the case, I can report that to the police committee um, saying, well, you know, if there's nothing that the police can do that they're not already doing, maybe what we need to do is to sort of turn this over to, to this committee, CJAC, to, to make it a, a, an issue to present to, to the city council. Maybe you don't want to talk about that right now, but. Well, no, I said Cameron and you, and so. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I have some strong feelings that I think go quite against what the police review is recommending on that. Well, I don't know that they're not recommending it yet. Um, no. we're, 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 the vote comes this, this afternoon. But we do have an ordinance and you know, it is illegal for us. Yeah, Merit. Right. I'm aware of so, that. As I've been reading uh, this, yeah. you know, as I've been we do reading have an that. ordinance about it, though. So, and the ordinance is weird because it particularly says females. Well, of, like, yeah, you can, one. You can change that. Uh, that can. That's an easy one. Um, <laughs> you know, that's one of the low-hanging fruit, and you know, and that's why I was thinking. Well, maybe, really, where where this proposal belongs is with CJAC, not with the police review board. That is a good point. I mean, or is this something that's just going to happen with city council? And so we could just perhaps like fill out the equity. Right. Um, right. Is, that, is that kind of what you're proposing? Is like, it's going to be moving forward. So just like what, like looking at the basically pros and cons of the proposed policy around sex work. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's complicated because there there are, have, there have to be distinctions between sex work and uh, tr sex trafficking and uh, various other kinds of things. And so I, I realize that um, there's no really broad brush way to get at this. But as I say, I think my own view is that this is really less an issue for the police department that, than it is for the, 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 count, the, the city council about what what they want that ordinance to look like because the police department just does what the ordinance says it should do right or, and or, Lauren, but, they do have, but they do have some discretion about well how how aggressive are we going to be in hunting down people and so sort of, you know and, and enforcing it and at this point the chief is not interested in in making that a, a high priority so lauren is the point person for both the public restroom committee and cjack right and I'm, as a city councilor, the public restroom, public restroom, and the for the police review committee. Sorry, they're in the same place in my own notes, and I must have just looked at them. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, I wonder if we should just like ask her what would, like, or just I don't know, if ask her permission. But I mean, I guess Michael, do you feel excited about taking this up like with under C Jack and? Is there a timeline associated with this? Is that, or is that going to, because that's not even going to be a recommendation coming out of the police review committee. Well, I don't know. Or maybe that it is. Will be. Right. The, the You're vote, talking about that today. Vote, yeah. Yeah. The vote takes place this afternoon. So um, if it passes, then it becomes a, you know, a, a police review committee issue. If it doesn't pass, then what happens to it? Does it get, just get lost or does it get, go somewhere so that the, whatever small changes can be made? can be brought to the city council's attention. That, I don't feel like I have any strong feelings. And so that's 
<laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, we can wait and see what happens. You know, see what and, happens in the police uh, review committee. Uh, but I just thought I would report that to you as a, as a possibility. Yeah, I guess I I don't feel I have enough information about that issue, especially as it exists in Montpelier. Um, and I'm also wondering, it seems like looking through last time's minutes, we're at a bit of an inflection point in terms of, you know, what CJAC does following the creative discourse work and figuring out a way to kind of revisit strategy and priorities. Um, so I wouldn't want to just dismiss it out of hand because I don't know enough about it. Um, but it seems like something we should look at within a spectrum of all the different kinds of issues that we want to be addressing as a committee. And I think Lauren's input would be really helpful. Okay. Oh, and I just remembered another recommendation, which is to uh, rewrite or to, to eliminate the ordinance about drinking in public places. Um, that turns out to be both very um, out of date and very difficult for the police to manage because of their, because it intersects with um, state law, which requires, you know, police to deliver people uh, uh, to, um, to safe havens or to detox centers. And it takes hours of police time and it often doesn't work. And the, and the chief is eager to get rid of that ordinance. So. Cool. All right, so I think we're leaving, just going back to the sex tra sex work um, uh, policy. I have, you'll, you'll talk about it at the police review committee tonight and then bring it, bring it back to, mm -hmm. you know, if it's not under the police review committee's jurisdiction, bring it back to CJAC to see if we want to make okay. do do more on that cool but there's not overwhelming enthusiasm within CJAC right now recognizing okay. kind of where we're at great all right should we move to the creative discourse survey results and city council presentation review um so I shared the updated drafts from creative discourses that have you know more context for um, the assessment in the slide deck removed the public restroom committee rec public restroom recommendation because there's now a new committee on that um, clarified what was community feedback versus consultant feedback or recommendations um, and just worked to make the report and the slide deck a little bit more um, congruent. Um, so this presentation is now going to be delivered. Here we go. I'm just going to, I'm so confused about all of the dates. August 18th. So we yes. have full month. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, just like, do we want to prepare any presentation to go along side by side with that? Or um, yeah, just any, what, what do we want to do as a committee? I mean, I think it would be useful for us to, um, to, to, to do, to, to, you know, provide some additional, you know, context and, um, you know, the interests of the city and of CJAC, um, kind of maybe to introduce them, but I'm not sure if that makes sense or if there's more to be done. Well, yeah, I, I think, oh, oh, sorry, Jamie. Okay. Um, I think us as a committee providing context around the creative discourse work uh, feels like the right thing to do when it's presented to council. It seems like what we're what we might be looking for from council after receiving these recommendations is guidance and or creating a process where why, by we can understand with them what we want to be doing as a committee. What are the kind of top bar things we want to start to work on um, in collaboration with city council um, and interfacing with our community. Um, so I don't know if that's a specific request to council about, okay, you've got these recommendations. We think you should do X, Y, and Z in consultation with us, or if it's, you know, laying out a process over 
however long to figure that out with them you know collaboratively um, but it does seem like we need to use this as a launching point for the future work that we want to do as a committee Cameron, what were you going to say? Sorry. I don't know. Sorry. The Zoom did something weird. Um, I do. I think this sort of builds on what Jeremy just said, because I'd really love for um, just to say something as staff and not like as your staff support, but tie into this presentation to sort of say, we're taking this really seriously. A lot of these easier recommendations uh, that we, you know, because they're all good ideas, you know. Um, a lot of these ones can, like, sort of like what Pellin said, all the ones that are like low cost, quick impact are things we can easily build into our work plans for the next year. So like, while there is work to be done on building a larger sort of equity plan, which is what y'all's like next steps are with your next 10K, right, is is we already are taking this seriously. I really want there to be, and I, I tried to take it to heart when Creative Discourse said, people don't want to do all this work for the city and then it just sit on a shelf, right? So how do, how do we intend to sort of like build this into what we do and already taking steps to build this into what we do? So um, maybe y'all could set it up or like, this creative discourse could give their presentation. I could say, here's what we already plan on doing. And then y'all could maybe go into like, what else do you, like, what do you want to see next council and how can we support you through this? You know, mm -hmm. just an idea. I, I do really want to have a time to, to say, we already see this. There are actionable steps that we can take. We're going to build them in somehow, right? To operationalize this work. Yeah, I like that. I like you kind of hitting on the accountability piece with our community of taking their participation and input really seriously. And lay, maybe that's laying out more specifically, even like we're going to check back in on these specific things in three months, six months, whatever it might be. Um, but just being even, even as clear as we can be with how we're going to monitor our work on these issues. One of the things about um, sort of the work we've been doing over the last year and a half is that we have um, our public portal with our strategic plan initiatives. And um, those are things I can easily, like if we build these into work plans or if we have initiatives that say like, here's these equity things, I can quarterly provide updates. Mm -hmm built in with our strategic planning process. That's something that we'd love to work on here and I'm working very closely with planning on is integrating all of the very many plans that float around the city, right? We have like we have so many plans, y'all. And there's no real way, like none of them are, they're all working in parallel, but we're tracking them all in different ways, right? So it's hard to interface. It's hard for the community to understand. It's hard for us to understand sometimes, you know, and and so just we're working very slowly, but we're working on integrating all of those into like a one-stop shop. And so that's how we'd like to, to present this data is like along with all this other work we're doing, because it should just be part of our work, right? Honestly, that's how I see it anyway. This just this should be like another facet of the work we do all the time. So sorry, I'm on a, I'm practicing my soapbox for staff. <laughs> Sounds good. So thanks. <laughs> and so then CJAC's role is more saying like we want to support you doing this here's you know some ways that we could do that like that maybe doesn't need to be super you know prepped and polished where we you know go around a circle and each say a word kind of thing but more can just um you know maybe prep some major some bullet points and, and take it from there um does that sound good or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, okay, so then going into like other business, I, I feel like I'm, you know, because 
<laughs> I mean, there's lots of excuses, but of like um, following up from the committee chair meeting of like there being these different groups, like asking for these, you know, for these different pieces. And like, I don't think we necessarily like followed I did not uh, follow through on checking back in with folks about like updating the website, um, Montpelier Lives process, the planning department, connecting with the homelessness task force. And like, you know, there, there were kind of all of this exciting like synergy. And so I just think that like that um, uh, connects well with the, um, with kind of what what you're just saying about like wanting to have like a portal with all of these different strategic plans of being like, even just within, <laughs> within us, I'm like there's all these different pieces where people are trying to be doing things together uh, or and want to be doing things together. And yet um, like creating those opportunities for collaboration. Um, so what, like I, I, had, I had marked down those ones of, that, of wanting to follow up with Montpelier Live planning um, and then the history and website. Um, were there other like next steps coming out of that committee chair meeting that we should be following through on? And have then to and stare at stuff to see if there's a back at the notes. Yeah. yeah. Hold on for a minute. Let me pull them up too. Well, one thought that occurs to me is that um, if if we want to do some follow up maybe we can offer to be a kind of um, clearinghouse for what, uh, what's going on in all, the, in all the various committees so that if there is a plan, for example, a quarterly report on any progress, if the chairs of those committees can communicate, want to take the extra effort and time to communicate with, with this committee about what's going on, we can present a kind of consolidated report every so often on what's going on, you know, what's what's changing or what's going on in, in, in equity and social justice with, with committee work so that they don't, you know, if someone has to report it to us before we can report it to them. So that's really a question about whether they, anyone wants to take on an additional work, but that's one way I could see following up the meeting that we had. Yeah, asking almost like doing like a newsletter or something like put put in your submissions of what you've been working on and what you need support in. Is that is that kind of what you're envisioning, Michael? Yes, something like that. Yeah. And so then I guess specifically those things looking back at, at my notes here. Um Oops, but now of course, too many tabs up and lost it. Here we go. So um, planning is looking at digging in on more of this in late July and August and asked for support. Um, and then Montpelier Alive was, they had their kind of DEI committee. I don't think they said what their timeline was. But maybe do we want to like um, just check in with those different folks? David, I think it was David at Montpelier Live. I'm not remembering his name, Kirby at Planning. Yeah. Um, and then I totally lost the person with the um, looking at getting more history on the website. But Michael, you that's yes, like well, totally yeah. up your alley. Yeah. Well, I, you, did, I, yeah. I, I, I presented a plan to Cameron. I'm sorry, she's not. Oh, here, great. But, but um, She's uh, it, it 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 involves you know small stipends to a to a few people, and she's looking for you know places in the budget, and it was not really high on her priority list. So, okay, here here she is. So, Cameron, we're talking about um, the the updating the history section of the website. Um, it will I, happen. We just entered our new fiscal year, so I have more money. Okay. I so, so uh, you and I need to, you and I need to 
to talk and I'll then contact the people that I had suggested. Okay. Yes, that would be great. I'd love to get quotes from them for that right. work. Okay. Definitely not. It, yeah. So we just had to wait until we ticked over and, um, right. <laughs> Thank you. Shana, can you, I'm, I'm blanking a bit on the Montpelier Alive um, piece of that, those takeaways. Can you refresh my memory? Yeah, I think it was, so they hired a consultant last year as well, who basically did an internal audit and said, I think like, you guys have a lot of work that you need to do. Good luck. And so then they like made a DEI like committee but I, I think we're like looking for more assistance for like implementation. Probably like what Cameron was just talking about the conference that you went to. Wow, that's very loud, sorry. The railroad comes through the middle of the house. <laughs> it has been significantly more active recently, right? Is that yes. just me? No, it's not just you. And the passenger trains will be starting on the 19th and we're being voluntold in a fun way to throw a party for it. So there's a party, come to the party. There'll be creamies and a train and a dollar tickets. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot more trains. They're coming back. I think they're carrying granite. I mean, in the few times that I've seen them, um, they're, they're moving granite slabs. Um, when are the passenger trains coming? When, when's that party? July the party's 19th. on the 19th in the morning. Michael already knows he's going, clearly. I'm actually going to be away, but I wish Aww. I would because I'm taking Amtrak to Chicago. Actually. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they're coming back on the 19th. It's actually going to be fun. I'm, I'm kidding. We have a yeah. band and everything. We could play some old-timey train music. There's a creamy truck at 9 o'clock in the morning if you really want that. Uh, <laughs> you got me. I'm gonna get be your, there. Get your, get your sugar high first. Oh, <laughs> first thing in the morning. Here we go. <laughs> it's gonna be good. I got like, my goal is before the 19th is to find a conductor hat to wear to the stupid thing. Because if I've got to be jovial at nine o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna be overly jovial. Nine o'clock in the morning. I'm ready to see you in a conductor hat. It's gonna be great. Um, sorry, Jeremy. Did I? Did you hear my? Did you hear that? And was that yeah. helpful? Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's clear. Circling back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess I can reach back out to Kirby and um David for Montpelier Live and for planning. I guess maybe that's just like I just dropped the ball. And um, does anyone else want to be in on either of those conversations, or should I just email them out when they get scheduled? And if anyone else wants to join or can join the the well. Great. Cool. Okay. So I feel like we're a little bit in this waiting game again, where the next time, so in a little over a month on the 18th is when we're going to um, be doing the presentation to city council. Well, you know, the, the there will be the presentation to city council. Do we want to not have a biweekly meeting leading up to that again? Um, do we want to meet before that, or you know, what like what what else do we have on our agenda for next steps and what makes sense for us meeting? I would argue that your next step is I don't I think argue is the right word there. The yeah, pr propose the, the next step would be to sort of come up with talking points for your own presentation, your own part of that presentation, because it is a bit away, it doesn't certainly have to be a rush, but I think that would be sort of your next step. And I'm just looking at the calendar here, sorry. Yeah. Would we just wanna meet the morning of Wednesday, August 18th to, to finalize, like, is that cutting it too close? No, I think that that's probably okay. Um, the, I, I, I assume that 
what we've said here gives you enough to go on, and we don't have to re we don't have to meet to review it, except just I guess to get prepped for that. That would be okay with me. And I'm kind of assuming there'll be some shifts and updates by the you know in a month as well, and over a month, six weeks. Okay, yeah, so I think we could also we could. Um, do some asynchronous work on suggestions for bullet points to pass around prior to that Wednesday meeting, right? Mm, yeah, no. We'll just be careful about doing work over email. Got it. So maybe we would send suggestions to Shana mm -hmm. and then we could look at that all together the morning of the 18th. Yes, that's great, okay. Okay, great. So um, each, everyone do some work on talking points and suggestions to me and we'll look at them um, on the morning of the 18th. I will send out, I'll reach out to yeah, Montpelier Live and planning and share when they're meeting and what they're looking for more specifically if other folks are looking to, to join that. Um, and depending on, it, you know, so in, it looked in the, goal of the draft of the police review uh -huh. and you the august around august 18th uh, august draft will be circulated the week of august 15th so we can also if that's out have some time to look that over as a committee um on the august 18th meeting as well sounds good and then michael will you just let us know about the sex work stuff yeah. you can just yeah. do an fyi via email yes To the whole committee or to just to you? What's the, Cameron, what's the mm. protocol? <laughs> so like sharing information is fine, but discussing it is not. So maybe we could right. just say, hey, this was decided by uh, the police review committee, okay. add it to our next agenda. And then we'll be, that's golden. Okay. So say, Cameron, you just, uh, you know, flexed your, I, I know Robert's rules muscles earlier really real today. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so speaking no, of when will the oh, oh I was gonna say one Google Docs policy for the city. I don't know what if there's a timeline on that or uh, we already sent that out to committees. Oh, okay. So um Google I don't Docs, think I saw it. I will resend it then. Um thank you. It makes me very worried. Um <laughs> didn't get it so uh both basically we ask that either you um, make it public to a point where it's like constantly linked in your material mm -hmm. it's not um if you're using it as a document repository but you can only use it as a document repository so if you have it if you like you have a document on there we can't go editing it outside of these meetings right which is issue because it's basically doing work over email is sort of how the law sees it now right so like if you had a google doc and we could all go in and edit it that's basically doing work outside of public meetings so um it can only you be used for non-editable document repository you have to link it in your minutes and your agendas and that's really how it's used so it's it becomes vaguely unhelpful outside of just yeah. this document place, but uh, until the laws catch up, yeah. Yeah. yeah, until the laws catch up with technology, that's sort of where we're at. Thanks. Yeah, that's what makes Google Docs so great, but also it's a great, you know, easy to use document storage too. Cool. Thank you. And then I think I interrupted you a long time ago about you were going to say something totally different. I don't remember now. So great. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> that wasn't important. All right. Anything <sighs> else? Thank you all. Yeah.